For those of you out there looking for the absolute smallest EDC flashlight, but with no compromises in both brightness and runtime, Olight's got you covered with the new Baton 4 Premium Edition. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. Today I've got the Baton 4 Premium Edition. That means that it is the Baton 4 flashlight and the included magnetic charging case. It has basically uh, Olight's MCC in the bottom here. And when you slip it into the case, it automatically starts charging it. And one of the great new features of this case, let's get a good focus on it, is that it's got a fluorescent display right here that tells you the power of the case itself. Because the case has a battery in it that allows it to charge the flash side up to five times. So you can use this flashlight, and it's got its own battery included, and it's not a huge one. It's about 500 milliamp hours. You know, it, this is a very small light. We're gonna get to that in the size comparison next, but you can use this until it's dead and then throw it in this case and it'll charge that flashlight back up to full and very quickly. And you can do that five times without ever having to plug the case itself into a power source. Let's start off with the box itself. So it comes in a really nice box with a magnetic flap on one side. And uh, when you open it, it's got the usual fare inside. Um, and when you lift this up, there is a, you know, a guide and it comes with a charging cable, but not an MCC because the MCC is included with this case. So what it's coming with is a USB-A to uh, USB-C and the charge port on the case is a USB-C. So, uh, you know, you, you basically get a MCC by way of the case. Um, and, and it will work with other lights as well, but there's some heavy caveats here that I'm going to get in, into a moment. Basically, uh, the diameter has to be right so the light can slip in. And some lights that could slip in uh, might present a risk to the case uh, if, if they were on melting the case. But um, this, this light is um, secured from all those problems. So you can't accidentally melt the case if you're using the included Baton 4. All right, let's get into some size comparison. So this is the new Nano, uh, the Warrior Nano. Brand new, and it is very tiny. And people are asking me, now that the Nano's out and it's so small, do you think there's a reason to get the Baton? And I was a little like, uh, I'm not sure. But the thing is, is that was because I really hadn't put the Warrior and the Nano in my hands at the same time and really thought about it. Um, I didn't even own a Baton at that point. Um, but uh, Olight sent me the new Baton 4. And look, it is a lot smaller, folks. I mean, this is a tiny little light. So... Um, you can see that it is much shorter. Even the body tube isn't as wide. You can tell that it's a smaller diameter. This one takes an 18350 battery. This one takes a 16340. So kind of a uh, CR123 style battery, but it's rechargeable. Uh, they're both proprietary. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to use Olight's branded of battery, uh, but they both include the uh, wireless charging on the end and they both have a magnet here so they can you know stick to the hood of a car or something when you're working so if you're going for absolute lightweight the baton is considerably lighter considerably smaller uh, it's the way to go also i note that uh, with the stock emitter and the stock optic in the baton the beam is a little tighter than what I found in the Warrior Nano with its stock optic and emitter. Now, I've since swapped my emitter, and you can probably see that in the pictures here. I de-domed a 519A, um, and now um, this one's ever so slightly throwier than this one, but stock, uh, this was a narrower beam than this would have been. 
Um, and I actually found the performance of this uh, emitter very good. Incredibly low lows and incredibly high highs. So uh, again, whatever pixie dust they're putting in here, they're they're really making it happen because you're giving me sublumen lows and blinding highs, which we'll get to in the lumen test section. But let's uh, carry on with our comparison here. Now, Olight was good enough to send me a uh, Baton 3 so that I could do a direct comparison. Now, I'm new to this line because I just haven't ever thought it was of interest. And I think that's going to be some of the strength of my video here because now that I've used it, I can speak to what my conception was and what the reality is, okay? So my perception was that I didn't want a case and it's just an extra thing to lug and why would I need that? And during the video, hopefully I'll address that I think the case is actually pretty clever. But you can see um, the case has gotten a little larger on the four, even though uh, you know the light is you know, basically the same size. I, I don't see any differences there. Um, and that accounts for the fact that this case can charge this one five times, whereas on the old one, I think it was three and a half times. Uh, don't quote me, but I think that's what it was. But there's some other key differences here. For example, you'll notice that um, there's just dumb emitter lights here on the top and here on the bottom to tell you when it's charging the case or tell you when it's charging the light. So if I can get a good focus on that and throw this in here like so, you'll see that uh, that lights up, that little red light, and then green to show that it's fully charged. Um, this case also has that right there, but uh, you know it's got the addition of telling you the battery charge level in the case, which is a great addition. One also really great thing about the case is when this uh, display goes off in a moment here, the display is actually a physical button as well. So you can push that button in and it'll give you a readout. So here, I'll go ahead and do it right now. Click, there you go. So that's a good feature. Oh, and when you're charging and you put the USB-C in right there, a little light comes up to the top here. It looks almost like a uh, degree sign and it flashes. So these guys are the same size. However, I did notice in my testing that the optic or the emitter, a combination of one or both, I'm not sure what it is because I, I looked really carefully and the optic does look to be a slightly different shape, perhaps. I don't know if you agree, but I was looking really carefully. And um, what, I, what I noted was that the beam was ever so tight, tighter on this one. Uh, again, this is like at the highest level scrutiny. Um, and it might just be a difference in emitter. Um, and again, uh, Olight doesn't ever disclose which emitters they're using, so I'd just be guessing if I said uh, a name. But um, there you go. So there's those. And uh, and then lastly, um, I wanted to point out about the cases that there's a shape difference when it's opened. So you can see that when it's closed, it, it's the same kind of just boxy shape. But when it's opened, you get the swoop here, whereas over here, it's straight across. And the reason why that's important is because uh, the I think that Olight has figured out that people really enjoy um, uh, putting the light in the case and uh, turning it on, you know, and maybe uh, while it's charging, uh, ceiling bouncing. And so uh, the fact that I can you know, turn it on and off because it swoops down and have access to this button is a big bonus. Because over here on the uh, Olight Baton 3, you know, it opens up and you, know, you can't get to the button. So uh, you have to pull it out and activate it and put it back in. If you want to change modes, you got to pull it out again. So it's really nice that it's uh, accessible right there. So let's segue right into the case itself. Uh, I already talked about how the swoop here, that this new swoop helps with ceiling, ceiling bouncing while you're uh, charging the light. Um, it's, a, it's an improvement over the old case. But I also want to point out that to me, 
the direction that the light went in to this old case, the fact that the clip goes out, um, that seems odd to me. Because, I mean, if my finger's right here using the button, I'm going to just want to transfer it like this, and that's not the way it goes. So I think they made a logical adjustment here when they turned it 180 degrees. So now, um, you know, you take it out, you're using your light, you turn it off, and it just goes straight in. So, I mean, that isn't like a huge difference, but it is a small quality of life change that I think is worth noting. One of the cooler things about the case is that the display is also a button that can be used to turn the light on. So if you push and hold, you can actually go through all the different modes and even turbo just by the button here. So not only is it curved so that you can do it right on the light, but you can actually just skip that all together and do it on the button. It's, it's pretty ingenious. I also noted that the case is intelligent, uh, meaning that if you put this on and then you double tap for turbo, when I close the case, the case is going to signal the lid is closed and turn the light off, watch. See, and that's not a bounce sensor or proximity sensor or anything like that. That's literally the case telling it. So if I, you know, there's no, there's no bounce sensor here. So don't worry about that. People have been complaining about the bounce sensors going off when they're not supposed to. And that's not what's going on. It's literally the case. So yeah, pretty cool. So, I mean, it just shows that they're, you know, thinking about this. Another thing I want to point out about the case now that we're in the case section is let's talk about whether you know this case makes sense so i think it does uh i'm actually becoming a convert I, I used to think that a standalone light you know maybe like this with a big battery like the warrior 3s was a better call than bringing a small light and an additional like battery pack but here's why i'm kind of eating my words on that because I'm realizing that, you know, I'm going to charge this kind of when I think to or when I have to. So this isn't going to be fully charged in most cases. All right. So let's say I just make the decision that this is too heavy for whatever camping trip I'm on or for, you know, EDC to work. Okay. So this is out. So then let's say I settle on this guy because it's got a bigger battery with longer runtime than this one does, you know, on its own at least, on, you know, separately. So the thing about that is that, again, this is not going to be at 100% most of the time because it's only when I think to charge it. And you might say, well, you know, if you have to bring this case and charge it that way, isn't that the same thing? And and not really, because you see, somehow bringing like a cable and this guy is almost the equivalent of putting this in its case and setting it down. Do you understand? I'm not plugged in in either way. And yet in this case, it's getting charged. And in this case, I have to go find a wall outlet. So you may think that's not a big difference, but I'm finding it is. I'm finding that extra step of having to find, you know, a USB-A port and plug it in is an extra step that I got to take and it's going to prevent me from wanting to charge as regularly as just docking this in its case. So, you know, I, I think that this really does top off the battery in this light frequently and it makes this little tiny battery in here feel like it runs much longer than it otherwise would. So I think it's a pretty smart design. And I can also see that, you know, for a similar weight and size of, let's say, a Warrior 3S versus this kit, if I'm going on a backpack trip, I might want to carry this uh, over here rather than this. And here's why because I'll get similar run times, right? Because I've got the larger battery in here, but this is so lightweight that this will go on my ball cap really easily and become a headlamp when I need it. Uh, so it just, I just, that this would never fit well. You know, it's just too heavy. My ball cap's gonna fall right off my head. So I kind of feel like 
for situations where you want something really lightweight, this solves the you know physics problem of having such a lightweight battery and such a small capacity. So I, I, I'm actually becoming a convert. I think it's a good idea. Okay, and let me finish out the charging case section by saying that you can absolutely plug in the USB-C cable in here and charge the battery in the case while charging the light while the light is running. You can do all the functions at once. And also, let me point out that uh, any light that fits in here, like a Baton 3, will work as well. However, uh, like the, the Perun 2, which is a headlamp, will physically fit in there, but it doesn't receive that shutoff signal, and so you could potentially burn a hole in the top here if it was uh, on turbo and you shut it. All right, let's talk about the fit and finish on the Baton 4. Um, actually, now that I'm holding them side by side, I'm really zoomed in. Let's see here. Yeah, no, they're the same length. Okay, they're the same length. I was wondering if I was wrong about that, but they're the same length. Um, anyhow, the uh, Baton 3 has the style of button where there's a little LED in there that is green or they're in orange or red to kind of approximate the power level. And the new baton four has a couple features that i really like one minor feature this is minor but i still think it's a quality of life change is that they literally have on the side here two little um uh icons and that's because now you have a battery indicator out of three dots and a power indicator out of three dots i'm sorry i, I motioned to the wrong side so battery indicator three dots power indicator three dots so if i turn it on you can see that the battery is full and you can see that we're at you know two bars out of, out of three here so um if you press and hold you can see that we're going through the three modes now there's three main modes and there's a hidden moonlight and then a hidden turbo so there's really five modes total if you want to get to those hidden modes but um i think it's really excellent that you've got you know a more logical read here uh, on the battery level and uh, you know where you're at as far as the power level instantly by just looking at it and i also i'm going to go in really close here and show you something this is using that new laser tech that they are using on the seeker 4. so what they've done is they've lasered like 50 tiny little holes in the aluminum and then sealed it with resin and so uh you see that there's these little tiny tiny holes and i know they look like they're flickering on the camera but trust me to your eye they're rock steady they look great they look absolutely great they just look it just looks like the aluminum is glowing from within it's a really neat feature uh and also it's it makes it more robust to not have it completely knocked out in a, you know, like a fiber optic inserted in a hole. The way they're doing it now uh, really prevents water ingress. So it's a, it's a much better way to do it. So the fit and finish is just phenomenal as always. Their anodizing never misses the mark. And the entire end of the light is basically the size of an MCC. Here, I'll bring the MCC over so you can take a look. It's actually smaller, isn't it? So you can see that eh, it's about the same, isn't it? But it's really tiny. So if you're wondering how small this light is and you have an MCC hanging around, that's the diameter of the light. And um, the clip does come off. Clip pulls off right here, but it only obviously goes one way because there's nowhere to seat it down here. But it is a two way clip and I find the clip is on there really good. I had to get something underneath it and pry to get it off. I'm sure you guys can tell by the quality of my voice that I'm just, I'm still kind of sick. I've been sick for the last few days, so if I may speak or sound a little delirious during this review, it's because I kind of am. Hey guys, can you hang on a second? I want to set this up, this next shot. Hello everyone. Um, I'm not exactly sure what Shul is worried about. I mean, he sounds fine to me. Charles, you know Shul normally sounds more nerdy and much less gravelly than that. 
I mean, he kind of sounds like he's been smoking a few packs a day. Luck Squad, I didn't know you were here, too. I thought you were off helping Matt Smith. Charles, that's just it. I'm there, and here, at the same time. You know that character Dr. Manhattan from The Watchmen? They based that character off of me. I could have sworn I heard some voices just then. That was weird. All right, whatever. Back to the review. Let's talk about the UI, and I'm not going to cover every little bit because my brain's just not into it right now. But I do want to show you that um, from off, you press and hold, you get to a very low moonlight, like an insanely low moonlight, which kudos to them. I, I love that. Um, and then from moonlight, you can exit by pressing and holding and going to low as signaled by the fact that, let's get a focus on here, that we're on one dot there. And then if you press and hold again, we're now on the medium, press and hold again, you go to the high, press and hold one more time, and you're going to go down to low. Now, there is a mode memory on um, all the modes except for uh, high and turbo. Um, I believe there's a mode memory even on the moonlight. Let me just double check it on camera right now. Yep, there you go. So mode memory on moonlight. Uh, I like that. Some people argue about whether that's a good idea. I think if you're using it as a bedside table not light and night, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, anyhow, so uh, then the turbo that's hidden is a double tap from anywhere, meaning like whether it's on or off, you just tap, tap, and you go straight to turbo. Uh, that kind of ramp up you see, that ramp up, watch this. See how it gets kind of like brighter? Uh, that's the telltale sign of a well-regulated driver. Um, so I always like seeing that personally. And uh, lastly, there is a hidden strobe, which I believe is three clicks. Let's give it a go. One, two, three. There you go, hidden strobe. All right, let's do some tint and lumen testing. So I'll start with the Sekonic and we'll start uh, here. Let me turn the lights off so I get a better reading here. Don't get any spill on that. There we go. And uh, there you go. So this one measures at 5,600K and about 100 points above Delta UV. And you can see that it's a low CRI admitter. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try it one more time on turbo. See if that kind of balances out the Delta UV a little bit. It does a little bit. Uh, so it's now 75. Let's see what it is on like low because low should probably go the other direction. Yeah, so it's about 171 on low. So be aware that this light isn't uh, winning any you know, tint awards. But I don't think that a light this size, that's what you're caring about. I think you're just caring about raw output and light, which I'm going to illustrate right now because I think this is where it really shines. So um, I'll turn the lights down a little bit more just so we don't get that 0.1 lumen bleed that I'm reading right here. So let's turn that down a little bit. All right, so now we got enough for you to read the lumens by. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to Moonlight, and you can see that Moonlight, it's like a tenth of a lumen. It's awesome. It might even be lower than that because this might be the aggregate of the spill that's already coming in because I'm not in a completely dark environment right now, but I'm reading nothing and then I'm reading a tenth. So that's pretty awesome. Now let's go to low. We got 12 lumens. Let's go to medium. We got about 55 lumens. Let's go to high. About 600 lumens. Now let's do turbo. So 1380, and we're counting here. And uh, we'll just keep running until we get to ANSI. Well, let's see here. So the drop off isn't isn't a lot for a, for a light this this small. The drop off is pretty pretty crazy small actually okay we still haven't really hit a drop off so to speak i'm kind of i'm kind of wondering when this, when this is going to happen come on it's got to drop at some there it goes finally got it finally got it but that is super awesome super respectable all right and at this point you know you you want it to drop off because you know light's getting pretty toasty 
So for the sake of the light, I'd, I'd want it to dial back. But that is a ton of lumens in a really tiny package. Okay, we're outside doing some beam shots for the Baton 4. And it's such a small little tiny light, it's hard to really match it up against anything. Um, maybe the Thrunite T1S might be a good comparison, but you know what? I gave that away. I the light didn't really interest me that much. So all I've really got to compare it, which is even close in any way, is Olight's own Baton 3 Pro. Obviously significantly bigger, So, but just to see what they look like against each other. And also I've got the ubiquitous Zebra Light uh, SC64 CLE. So this is the one with the LH351D uh, 4000K in it. it. It's not, you know, a fair comparison by any means, but at least maybe you'll know one of these two lights and it'll give you an idea of what this one would look comparatively. So let's start with the two O lights. So I'm going to go straight to turbo. All right, there we go. Uh, straight to turbo on that nearest tree. Now let's go to that second tree on the left there. And I don't think I'm making it back in the back there. I don't think I'm going that far back. But let's take a look at the hot spot on the ground here. And I'll slowly go up, see if you can see that on the overhead view. See if that reads. But let's take a look at this beam again. All right, now let me switch over to the Pro. And, and there's the Pro and Turbo. And on those trees and to be honest, I think, let me switch back to, yeah, I don't know. They're very close. I'm not really sure which one's brighter. I mean, they're insanely close, aren't they? Jake, I mean, what do you think? Which one do you like? I think the one on your left is the best. Well, it's definitely smaller. If it looks the same, then that wins, right? Yeah. All right, so let's do now the Ton 4 versus the Zebra Light, which will be no comparison, honestly. This is just for, you know, if you guys know Zebra and how that is. So there's the, oh, I'm out of focus. There's the Baton, there's the Zebra. Baton, Zebra, now on those trees, Baton and Zebra. The Baton's clearly brighter, but uh, there you go. You know, I think it's clear who this light is for. It's for anybody who values a super lightweight EDC. Like if you want just the smallest little EDC possible, this is for you. You can get it without the case, but I kind of feel like the case, you know, kind of hides a lot of the issues that come along with having such a minuscule tiny battery. I mean, I've got other lights that run on 16340s. It's, it's a very old style battery. Uh, you know, I got some Gizmo Haikus. Um, even my Cool Fall Spies run off of 16340s. And they just don't have a lot of capacity. And what people often do is they double them up in order to get extra capacity. But, this, but then, you know, your light weighs more because you're carrying two batteries all the time. So this is kind of a clever way to kind of separate that weight out into a separate object you can leave in your car, truck, or your office or something like that, or in your backpack while you're walking around and then, you know, uh, just throw this in the case. And as I said, you don't really have to think about charging it because it's just always doing it itself. You just throw it in there and it starts charging. So, uh, you know, every once in a while, this is, and this is going to come on every time you throw it in there. So it's going to bark at you. You know, you're going to see that in single digits and you're going to go, oops, time to charge it. And a cool thing to note is that when this is in single digits, your light is still fully charged. You know, you still have the runtime of this light to correct the matter and charge the case. So I, I do think the Baton 4 has a place in our world still, and it's for people that want ultra light EDCs. Thanks for watching the view, guys. See you in the next one.